Hello all of you fat children and kids that die constantly. Thought my video for season 1 was a bit repetitive. I'm going to try to trim down the reviews for episodes I don't have much to say on. And basically just say that I don't have much to say. Which is going to get repetitive. Anyway, let's jump straight into the first episode. This episode is a perfect troll episode. That doesn't mean it's the perfect episode. Just that it's perfect for trolling people with. Airing just four weeks after the season one final and on April Fool's Day. It did not follow through with the Cartsman's Mom's A Slut story and instead gave us a Terence and Philip episode. It's a beautiful troll episode. I don't remember it particularly well even just after watching it, but I thought it was pretty funny throughout. The ridiculousness of Saddam Hussein being a part of it, Scott being so serious about everything he says is really funny. I hate you both! I've hated you ever since I can remember! I hate you, and I wish you both had cancer! Cancer? Yes, in the head! The insults towards Ugly Barb are great, because it's clear that Terence and Philip are just dicks. And the way the characters talk, it makes everything feel slightly off, but in a strangely good way sometimes. The animation doesn't even bother me here, because the show jokes about Terence and Philip itself being poorly animated, even though they're real. The ridiculousness helps make this the funniest episode so far. The problem is, that even though the farts aren't necessarily supposed to be funny themselves, I find them so unfunny and so irritating that it takes away from this episode quite a bit. While it increases the comedy in the episode at some points, Terence, Philip and Saddam's voices are hard to listen to. If it was more balanced out with other characters, I think it'd be less irritating. It also felt like it went on for twice as long as it should have and it was just dragging on for me. I feel like if the episode was trimmed by 5 or maybe even 10 minutes, it'd be so much better. Overall I think this episode is, and this is going to cause flashbacks for anyone that watched my season 1 review. Mediocre. I wish it was shorter and the farts while a central part of Terence and Philip weighed down an otherwise funny episode. This is obviously the actual continuation to the season 1 final episode. The title itself I find funny and I think is made funnier because of the troll episode airing before it. Firstly, one of the main things I like about this episode is that a large amount of season 1's recurring characters are around. The best part of the episode is the narrator, without a doubt. I have an issue with Cartman interacting with them, despite them not being real. Luckily, it's only a small moment. Who shot Mephisto? Was it the school counselor? Or was it Miss Crabtree? Or was it- hey, Wait a minute! I didn't find out who my father was! Or was it Miss Brosnask? The acting improved throughout season 1, and here the acting is consistently good. Not great, but consistently good. The characters interact with more believable timing. This episode helps to develop its side characters, particularly Leanne Cartman. She's portrayed as a caring, not very smart like most of the adults of South Park, and actually portrays her as, for lack of a more relevant word, a slut. Leanne has her own plot sleeping with politicians to get abortions legal for kids up to eight. Turns out she misunderstood what she wanted in classic South Park humour. A mix of absurd and misunderstanding plus something else I can't quite put my finger on. Strangely, Cartman is used relatively little. There's a plot at the hospital during the storm with the boys and chef, the previously mentioned Ms. Cartman one, and one with the side characters during the filming of the events of Cartman's Mum's A Slot. The Ms. Cartman one is one note, but not in a bad way. For a one note plot to be flat out bad for me, I think it would require more screen time. It doesn't get enough time to be more than that, so I'd say it's pretty good. The plot with the boys is decent but I wasn't exactly interested in Stan in this episode. I did enjoy seeing them send Kenny out to death though. The plot with the filming was the best. The townspeople going to cannibalism within hours of the power going out is brilliant, classic South Park. Them going to cannibalism again, only about an hour after, is even more brilliant. The ending is a massive cop out though to the mystery. I feel like there being three episodes with the build up of wanting to know the answer, only to get this answer, was a bit of a cop out. That being said, the cop out is at least funny, because the characters also hate the answer. Overall I like this episode. It does pretty much everything well. 
I didn't care about the stand stuff, but everything else was at least decent, even if it wasn't consistently brilliant. Overall, I can say I like this episode. This episode has two plots. We follow school counsellor Mr. Mackey talking about how drugs are bad, and eventually him using drugs. We also follow the main set of boys not understanding what circumcision is. Mr. Mackey is one of few characters that like doing what they do, so that is a thing somewhat unique to him, and while it being unique isn't automatically a good thing, I do think it's a good thing in his case. This episode, like a good portion of season 2, is really forgettable. The boys having a misunderstanding due to their innocence is something that will get done a lot in this series, and this is just a really dull and one note version of it. It isn't really ridiculous, it's just the boys lack of understanding. Mackie's downward spiral in life should have been a better episode than we wound up getting. As it stands, it's just really forgettable. The main plot also quickly decides to throw in the fact that Ike's Canadian. It's thrown in quite randomly, and changes the plot quite heavily because of it. I feel like it could have been better as its own episode, and feel like it was just thrown in for additional conflict. There's only one truly funny moment in this episode, and it's Sheila and Gerald thinking Ike is getting killed. The humour in that moment goes away a bit for me though, after the initial scream. The boys not telling Sheila and Gerald that they made a fake Ike and going through with a funeral seems like it goes too far for Kyle. It definitely fits for Cartman, I think it fits for Kenny, Maybe Stan, but not Kyle. The problem is, at this point in the series, Stan and Kyle are basically the same. One is Jewish, and the other one has a girlfriend slash crush. That's their main difference at this point. They are not well defined. This episode, with the exception of a few Cartman remarks, and the previously mentioned moments, besides those, the episode isn't particularly funny. Overall, and say it with me kids, mediocre, mediocre, mediocre. The episode focuses on the mystery of who banged the farmer's chicken, but it more so focuses on Bar Brady quitting his job and learning to read. We follow Bar Brady, which makes sense since he's a cop, and we don't have Detective Harris yet in the series, one of my favourite characters. It's good that the town actually respects Bar Brady enough not to loot, showing that he might actually be decent at his job. We get what you'd expect from a Bar Brady episode, unprofessionalism, and dumb jokes. The episode does develop him beyond being dumb by making him illiterate. I think in any show it's important to develop your side characters, and South Park definitely knew that. Mr. Garrison bullying Bar Brady is the highlight. He continues to be hilarious and just a dick to everyone. Oh, oh, oh. Wrong! Try again, dumbass! <laughs> the episode also has the iconic moments of Cartsman saying, Respect my authority, while dressed as a cop. With that, we get a mockumentary, which connects with the beginning of the episode with Bar Brady. The ending was that brilliant South Park ridiculousness. The guy rapes chickens to cause Bar Brady to read. So I formulated a plan to encourage him to learn the magic of reading. So you f***ed a bunch of chickens? Yes, yes exactly! Don't you see? Only by f***ing chickens could I get Officer Barbrady to become literate! Then they kinda just kill off the chicken fucker. I liked this episode. It has focus in the main plot and is actually pretty good despite being a Barbrady episode. Someone who I wouldn't expect to have a good episode, especially not this early on. The Cartman side was short and showed up quite far into the episode, but I still enjoyed what we got. Come on down south this episode, much like the last episode, has two stories. Much like the last episode, one is the boys, specifically Kyle, not understanding something, and in this case, it's a deformity slash abnormality. I like Kyle's comment about how he shot they're allowed to play dodgeball in school. I know that the primary school and high school I went to were always terrified for people's safety with certain sports, or even just monkey bars, but then would let people play dodgeball or rugby. Weird. This episode is another one that tries to develop another member of the town, other than the main boys or Garrison. This time it's both Sheila and Pip. Sheila does what you expect her to do, she likes to tell people stuff. Sometimes she's in the right and other times she's just not. Usually she's just so loud she feels to do what she aims to, 
even if it comes from a good place. The main plot is mostly Sheila and Mayor McDaniels driven, though the whole town gets carried away with making nurse... Gollum feel equal while constantly pointing out how she's different. This gives us a good picture of what the town will become with their complete absurdity and lack of understanding of things around them. Unfortunately, this is one of the most plain versions of that story, without a lot of humour elsewhere to make up for it. The Pip dodgeball plot felt very Butters. It felt like if they came up with the concept now, it'd be for Butters, but since Butters wasn't really a character at this point, they gave it to Pip. Pip isn't a character I like. It felt like he was both the character the characters pick on and the British kid. I usually find British aimed jokes quite funny as long as they aren't bottom of the barrel crumpets and tea jokes. The Simpsons in England is an episode I find funny than most people probably do. One of my favourite vacation episodes from the show. South Park mostly just calls Pip French. Never been a fan, he doesn't have but his charm, niceness and innocence to make the bullied side work either. This episode isn't very funny, does have the very funny Chinese commentators with unbelievably stereotypical accents spouting racism towards Americans. The kids are getting ready to play. I don't suppose they'll have any problems seeing the ball with their big American eyes. <laughs> yeah, good thing they have those big eyes so that they don't have to rely on that amazing American interact. <laughs> the episode also has the somewhat funny moments of Gerald saying dead fetus. Sheila, could you pass me the dead fetus? I mean, gravy. Ow! Much like the last episode, this episode is mediocre. Next! Come on down south again, meet some friends, man. The plot this time around follows the boys playing a prank on Jimbo as revenge after Jimbo annoys them by not giving them a story that gets them a good grade for their Vietnam report at school. There's also a Jesus B plot with him trying to keep up ratings, though the plots do connect later on in the episode. The thing I appreciate the most about this episode story wise is just the origin of Jimbo and Ned meeting. We get the return of Jimbo and Ned killing whatever they damn well want to, but it's less funny in this episode than it was in Volcano. It's just them killing stuff with less clever reasoning. About three quarters of the episode just feels like it's build up to what the plot wants to be, but the boys prank slowly building up is the majority of the plot rather than focusing more on the aftermath of the prank. It feels really slow. Sure, I can remember the loose idea of the plots years later, but before watching this episode after years of not watching it, that's all I could really remember. That being said, I did remember the Jesus scene where he interacts with the audience. I didn't realise it was a part of this episode, but I really enjoyed that moment. Man, Taylor, I think we're forgetting something very important in all of this. Okay, sure, he touched some children, but the man is a great singer and he has entertained us for so many years. W what are you talking about? Michael Jackson, all this bad math and putting the man down. Maybe he did touch some children now and then, but come on, it's Michael Jackson. Don't feel too bad, Montel. We all want to touch children sometimes, it's only natural. I flat out didn't remember Jesus even had his own plot in this episode. I just remembered that moment. That moment being one of the highlights of the first couple of seasons. The Jesus plot story-wise is very simple though, so while I am a big fan of that scene, I'm not a massive fan of the whole thing. Overall, this episode is M-E-D-I-O-C-R-E. -E. Full stop. Come on down south City on the Edge of Forever has the school bus getting stuck on an edge of a... Forever? We get two stories. We get one with the kids on the bus that's stuck and... It's a clip show. In season two, why? Why? Clip shows are terrible for me and most people. Oh. It's a trick. Yeah, okay, that's the way to do it. Meanwhile, Mrs. Crabtree meets a guy on the road when looking for help for the bus, and the guy clearly likes her. She then quickly becomes famous. The episode is named after a Star Trek episode, if I'm not mistaken. I won't get any references from that, since I haven't seen that episode of Star Trek. The main plot being a twist on clip shows is a good sign straight away. I'm sure something else would have done it before this, but most shows that do clip shows just do a clip show. No matter the quality of the new stuff, I'm rarely a fan. That being said, I feel like this plot misses the potential massively with it simply being one story in a two story episode. Another problem with the plot is simply that they can't do this flashback slash clip show style episode again 
without being accused of rehashing. I bring this up because doing this in its second season means it can't have the characters misremembering the most iconic moments from the series, since most haven't happened yet. Mrs. Crabtree gets her own plot, the story itself isn't very good, I think it's actually bad. I like how the show continues to expand upon supporting characters' personalities. I didn't find Mrs. Crabtree's voice in this episode to be annoying even though it was quite loud. I think it's because it was balanced out with the flashback plot. That voice does sound incredibly painful to do though. The plot isn't funny, it develops an undeveloped character which is good, but in an uninteresting way. I really dislike that most of the episode was just a dream. Yet that the episode was taking the piss out of itself, it had a Mrs. Crabtree falling in love plot, a clip show story, and the fun was jumping the shark. It was taking the piss. I think I'm mostly not a fan because it means the underdeveloped character of Mrs. Crabtree never really got the development since it was all a dream. It all of being a dream may have been annoying, but at least the episode makes fun of itself I guess. I I, I don't know. Something making fun of itself doesn't stop criticism automatically, but for the most part, this episode did what it wanted to. Favourite bits was at the beginning of the episode with Mrs. Crabtree threatening to kill a bunny, and Kyle saying she'd do it. Funny in its own right, but it's also a reference to Con Air. Y'all be quiet or the cute little bunny dies! <gasps> She always tries to quiet us down by threatening to kill that bunny, but I wonder if she ever would. Oh, she would, dude. She would. My second favourite moment was the parents of South Park all singing together, rather than looking for their kids for a decent amount of time. We also get typical Fat Cartman, which is almost always funny. Overall, this overall is overall mediocre overall. Come on down South Park and meet some friends, man. From the title of this episode alone, gotta be honest, I didn't really remember which episode this was. Which is weird because I can recall almost every other episode of South Park, at least a little bit by the title. This episode is obviously about the summer, but it's actually more about a firework ban. As soon as that came up, I realised it was the episode with snakes. The boys part of the story is just them being bored. Cartman tries swimming, Mae McDaniels wants the biggest snake, and Jimbo and Ned want real fireworks. Meanwhile, Mr. Garrison loses Mr. Hat, and basically breaks as a person. That's a lot of stuff to balance in an episode. I know I said I didn't remember the episode from the title, but the main plot is one I remembered pretty well after the story started. That being said, it isn't one I like that much. It's just the boys being bored, and we don't really get to see anything interesting from the rest of the town, and that's a shame as this episode is pretty town focused. Cartman's swimming mini plot seems completely unnecessary, it's just typical Cartman being annoyed, but without the other characters to bounce off of, it's just a bit dull. The Mr. Garrison stuff is far more interesting. I really enjoyed what we got. Mr. Garrison losing his mind over losing Mr. Hat is great. It's just a shame the episode doesn't really do more with it. The highlight was from this plot too. The prank call that was obviously Mr. Mackey. Hello? Hello, is Mr. Hat there? Is this some kind of joke? <laughs> yes. You go to hell! You go to hell and you die! I'm gonna find out who you are! No, I don't think you can. I'm gonna... God damn it! Chef's best song so far for me is in this episode. That's all regarding that. The episode has stuff happening everywhere, even though most of it is connected to the firework ban. It also having a funny but unrelated garrison story makes this episode feel even more unfocused. The firework stuff has a couple funny moments, like Jimbo getting such a basic question wrong, but it's not very funny as a whole. Is anyone other than the two of you traveling in this vehicle? No, sir. Do you have any firearms or explosives in the car? Yes. I mean, no. No. Open your trunk, please, sir. Damn. Damn, I always get that question wrong. The Garrison stuff is great, though, both in story and humor. Even if I think it's short, this plot stops this episode from being bad. Overall, this episode is mediocre. Mediocre. Come on down South Park and meet some friends, man. The Sundance Film Festival causes Mr. Hanky to become ill. Meanwhile, those Hollywood's peoples try to take over South Park. Meanwhile, Chef tries to sell stuff to the visitors. Meanwhile, I guess, Stan and Wendy, I guess, are uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, I guess. The song Chocolate Salty Balls reached number one in the UK's single chart, which must be a pretty awkward song for most people to listen to. Brilliant. The song itself is good. Not one of my favourites from South Park as a whole, not even close, but is definitely one of the best from Chef. Throughout the episode, Cartman pokes fun at Wendy. Not a massive deal, but it's a recurring thing throughout the episode. Barely funny too. 
and Wendy's voice is far easier on the ears in this episode, I have two picks this time for the highlight joke or jokes for this episode. Cartman calling Wendy a bitch in the most petty voice at the beginning, and the boys finding Mr. Garrison in the sewers, because of course he's down there. Mr. Garrison? Oh, uh, hello children. What are you doing down in the sewer with a bunch of snorkel stuff on? Oh, I, I was just, uh, hanging out. In a sewer? Children, do you know how to file a police report? No. no. Good, see you in school. Pretty average episode as a whole though, and I'm still not a fan of Mr. Hanky. Luckily, this episode is decently funny, once again because of Cartman, and the Garrison brief scene. Mediocre. Shelly gets chicken pox, which gives Sharon and the other parents the idea to expose the boys to chicken pox. There's also a little plot going on between Kenny's dad and Gerald. I liked Kenny's dad saying a grace before eating, and just being really bitter towards God and Kyle's dad. Lord, we thank you for this staggering payload of frozen waffles you have bestowed upon us. And since we have been faithful to you, we know that you will send us some good fortune one of these days. Even though you sure as hell seem to be taking your sweet time. Amen. Amen. My favourite moment was probably the montage of what I can only presume to be a hooker. Sex worker spreading herpes rapidly. One time when Gerald laughed, it was just completely out of place. And I can't tell if it was intentionally meant to be poorly acted, or if it was just a big unfortunate standout. I really don't have many thoughts on this episode. Some funny moments, but not many standouts. I think it's mediocre. The boys go to a field trip to the planetarium. Meanwhile, Cartman auditions to be the Cheesy Puff song singer. The two stories are well paced. The main plot is completely uninteresting to me though. Cartman's plot is great because Cartman getting to be a dick is almost always great. Not much memorable in this episode for me. Though the guy not being able to say planetarium because of a bones disease is strange and because of that, it is memorable, even if I didn't find it particularly funny. In some cases, I do think it's better to leave some impression rather than no impression, even if that impression is bad. This episode isn't forgettable, as I do remember enough about it, yet at the same time, nothing stands out. The episode isn't very funny, but Cartman does get a few funny moments. Even Garrison doesn't get much of a reaction out of me this time, though. Cartman has been an arsehole a lot in the past, but he's approaching the line of being more terrible or evil than just being an asshole. Do you think I might win, Mommy? I hope so, honey. Then perhaps we can eat for a little while. Hey, look, they're giving away bread outside. <gasps> Did you hear that, Mommy? Come on, perhaps we can get some food in our stomachs. <laughs> Psych. Overall, this episode is mediocre. Come on down south again, meet some friends, man. Clubhouses has the boys building. Clubhouses? What a shocking revelation. Meanwhile, Randy and Sharon are upset with each other. On top of this, a large part of this episode has a focus on Baby thinking Kyle has a hot ass. Jokes based on the South Park kids' appearance tend to be funny, since the show takes the piss out of the simplicity of the designs. The plot with Randy and Sharon connects heavily with the clubhouse's plot, because that stuff obviously involves Stan, even though most of the interesting clubhouse focus is on Cartman and Kenny. The stuff with Randy and Sharon is dull, because at this point they're dull characters. I loved Roy though. Since the episode tries to balance a marriage issue episode, following both the parents and the kid, then a clubhouse plot with Cartman and Kenny, and the truth or dare love story plot, it feels like the show doesn't get enough out of each idea. A lot of my favourite South Park episodes are dumb little ideas that somehow manage to last for 20 minutes, but a lot of these earlier episodes in the show cram a lot in and it's usually not for the best. That's the biggest holdback for the episode, just not being able to reach the potential for each concept. It does mean the episode has a fast pace, but at the same time, I find it to cause it not to get a lot of jokes out of each concept. I like the ridiculousness of Kenny being able to convince some girl six years older than him to go to the clubhouse. And it's pretty obvious he's my favourite character for these earlier seasons. The Mr. Garrison rant at Mr. Twig was great. I told you never to mention that name in my classroom again. Mr. Head is a two-time and whore, and now we all learn from Mr. Twig. But Mr. Twig sucks. Yeah! yeah. That is enough. Mr. Head is gone, and he isn't coming back, and I don't want to hear it! The highlight of the episode without a doubt, though, was Roy. He really helps the otherwise boring plot. Son, could you please come help me with the firewood? Dude, we cut firewood all day yesterday. We have enough to last 12 years. When will you let me in? 
Let me love you. Now get your ass out here and help me. Overall, I find this episode mediocre. The boys keep getting swindled by a carny. Meanwhile, the town celebrates Cow Day. It's a day where cows are released and people run for their lives. Also, Cartman thinks he's a prostitute. Sucky sucky and all that. Uh, so I'm really confused. I feel as if I remember this episode because of the couple visiting South Park, but I don't really remember anything confidently about it. I'm thinking I may have only watched it once in the past and didn't pay much attention to it. To be honest, I was kind of hoping I definitely hadn't seen it for a nice surprise. I'm still in a bit of state of confusion. My favourite moment is simply Cartman saying he didn't work out the maths correctly, because he didn't take into account that he's bad at maths. How much do we have left, Cartman? Uh, three dollars. What? You said we had plenty of money, Cartman! Yeah, but I didn't take into account the fact that I suck at math. You son of a bitch! Ah! I also liked the recurring jokes of shenanigans. I don't like how it randomly slaps on a cat and being a prostitute plot far on in the episode. And I think the outsiders going into South Park is better handled in the wacky molestation adventure. Overall, this episode is mediocre. Definitely hoped the episode I didn't remember would be a fantastic one, but maybe I have seen it and forgotten it. I'm really confused. I'm gonna see a therapist about this. Come on down South Park and meet some friends. Chef Aid has Chef realising one of the songs he created was ripped off and Chef simply wanting some credit, but getting sued because of it. There is also a B-plot where Mr. Twig gets boiled alive and Mr. Garrison trying to find the culprit. The episode is called Chef Aid, but really it should be called the Chewbacca Defence. The Chewbacca Defence is stupid and irrelevant, but it feels like a classic South Park joke. One that deserves to be as well recognised as it is. Obviously something that's used in law but not called the Chewbacca defence did make that form of argument more well known though. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chewbacca. Chewbacca is a Wookiee from the planet Kishik. But Chewbacca lives on the planet Endor. Now think about that. That does not make sense. The episode has a large focus on giving Chef some development. It gives us a backstory on Chef and shows us all of the celebrities he's met over the years. The backstory is somewhat interesting, but I just didn't find much humour to come from it. Even the Chewbacca defence wasn't particularly hilarious, it was mostly just a nice deconstruction of a dumb argument. The corporate guy is alright in bits, but is a bit dull in other bits. I feel like they should have made him even more over the top evil. The Mr. Garrison side of the story obviously has Mr. Hat be the culprit, but Mr. Garrison freaking out is always fun. I liked the recurring joke throughout the season of Mr. Garrison hating Mr. Hat, but the kids hating Mr. Twig. The best moment isn't the Chewbacca defense to me, it's just Mr. Garrison warning Chef not to take advantage of him. You, Mr. Hat, and Mr. Twig, you've got split personality schizophrenic GB. I warn you, Chef. Don't even think of taking advantage of me in this prison cell. What? The weird thing about the Mr. Garrison stories this season is I feel like they could have combined a couple of his B-plots and just made them into full episodes. Something they likely did the way they did though, so the audience wouldn't get mad about not seeing the boys and to not make the main plots ever feel dragged out. Overall, the episode is mediocre. Some interesting story in the main and the B-plot is funny, but it doesn't have a good story in both or good comedy in both. It's mediocre. Come on down South Park and meet some friends. Spooky Fish is a mediocre episode. Is there really any point in me delaying my rating at this point? The episode has there being two Cartmans and of course eventually Evil Kyle and Evil Stan show up and while this is happening Stan dealing with his murderous goldfish which causes a separate plot for Sharon to hide bodies. The episode's best moments is at the very beginning. The alternate nice Cartman just dumbfounding the other boys is great. What? I had to stay home today because my mother wasn't feeling well. She has the flu and I wanted to take care of the house so she could stay in bed. I just wanted to catch you guys to see if we were assigned any homework tonight. What the hell are you talking about, Cartman? In the opposite way, the evil Kyle and Stan dealing with our version of Cartman is great. Aha! There you are, Cartman! <laughs> nice costume, you guys. You spent about a buck fifty on those. We're here to take you back, goody two-shoes. Oh, I've got a better idea. Why don't you two go f*** yourselves? I also really liked the pet store guy pissing on the bodies from the Indian burial ground for no reason. An Indian burial ground here before I bought it. So you just built your store on top of Indian burial ground? Oh hell no! First I dug up all the bodies, pissed on them, and then buried them again upside down. Why? Why? I don't know. The ant flow joke was pretty clever too. 
This episode has spooky vision. I hate spooky vision. It makes the episode hard to watch. It's made even worse when the text on screen doesn't stand out from the colours behind it. I always find it weird when characters in shows get told off for saying damn. This isn't a complaint, it's more just an observation. I'm from the UK and saying damn doesn't seem like a big deal over here. I didn't like Sharon clearing all the bodies. I don't find it very believable for her character. If it was Butter's mum or dad, then I would, but Sharon seems more normal than most South Park residents, so I just found it odd. So yep, mediocre, nothing truly that stands out, but some decent moments accompanied by irritations. Come on down South Park and meet some friends, man. Merry Christmas Charlie Manson has the boys going to Cartman's grandma's around Christmas time. It of course also introduces Charlie Manson eventually when Cartman's uncle breaks out of prison with him. I liked the pacing of this story. It introduces the Cartman family quickly, gives a reason for Charles Manson to be in the story and gives us a good amount of time with Charles Manson since there isn't a B plot. Stan does have his situation with his family going on but I don't think I consider that a B plot. It's always really connected to the main. Seeing Cartman's family is fantastic, they definitely feel like Cartman's family, making Leanne not fit in in that way. This family is probably the most interesting part of the whole season. I also liked the news reporter getting really personal about Charles Manson. Manson has never shown any signs of remorse for his crime. If you see Manson, please kick his ass and smash his f***ing face in for me, and then call the police. And Cartman not hesitating to hit his cousin in the back of the head. I always enjoy the interactions between Cartman and his mother. Their dynamic is awful, but in the best possible way. Tst, being one of my favourite episodes because of that. And by the way, if in the final recording of this I'm saying tst, it's because tst comes out like tst and doesn't sound like tst. This is one of South Park's highly looked at episodes. I don't hear much praise for this episode individually, but I hear tons for every South Park Christmas episode as a package, before Happy Holograms at least. I'm not a big fan of the original Mr. Hanky episode, but in a shocking turn of events, yeah, I, I like this episode. No one expands on the South Park cast of characters even more by introducing Tweak. The boys are put into a team with Tweak to write an essay, and Tweak suggests gnomes that steal underpants. Meanwhile, Tweak's father is given an option to sell his store or risk being put out of business. I say meanwhile, but in reality, both plots intercept quite a lot. I like how Tweak's dad is basically a walking advertisement. I didn't remember this episode much. I obviously remembered the underpants gnomes, but I actually like Tweak's dad, even though I found him as a person quite annoying. At points, Tweak's voice is a little off, but this is his first appearance, so I'm not shocked. My favourite moments were Mr. Garrison, just in general this time. Whether it's him threatening the kids, or just taking credit and being a dick about it. I also liked how everyone just hates the corporate guys. One thing I didn't like, and it's not really an issue with anything that I watched in the episode, is that the title is about the gnomes, instead of anything about the coffee stuff. I didn't like the gnome stuff really at all. It felt pretty filler with the one good thing coming from it being the missing stage too. I also felt like Tweak was relatively pointless in this episode along with the gnomes. Tweak was pretty much a one note joke and was there as a reason for the boys to take the essay from the dad. The gnomes kind of felt like crab people except with the joke of it being a stupid way to end the episode. That said, the plots felt very South Park-y with taking the middle ground and just not taking a side. But with South Park, I feel like it makes the most sense as it allows for the opportunity to make fun of both sides and give credit to both. Overall, this episode is mediocre though. Come on down South Park and meet some friends, man. When watching through the season, I was watching the episodes on Now TV because of convenience, but for some stupid reason, this episode wasn't on there. So I had to go to the DVD. The boys discover a man encased in ice that they believe is a caveman. Mephesto and the rest of the town make a big deal about how long he's been frozen, but it turns out he was only frozen for like 32 months. That's that stupid funny style of comedy South Park does really well, where the adults are completely stupid and don't understand obvious things. The issue there is that this style of humour I like from South Park isn't as polished this early on in the series as it will become. The best moment for me is Larry's wife moving on very quickly and having kids with someone else, and some of the kids are far older than the period he was gone for. I also liked the recurring joke of Steve Irwin and the thumbs up the butthole. Mostly the last one though. Notice the dilated pupils of this prehistoric man. A sure sign the prey is frightened. As well as he should be, as I will now jam my thumb in its butt hole. Huh? The arguments between Stan and Kyle aren't funny for me, and it isn't an interesting plot. I'll give it one thing. It was a basic, bland, and expected plot. Oh, wait, that's 
not a good thing. The exaggeration of how long he was frozen is funny, and there aren't many highlights in this episode as it does rely on that one joke over and over. Overall, this episode is mediocre for me. Well, that's a long season of South Park now covered. It might not be long compared to a lot of other animated shows like The Simpsons, but it's the longest South Park season by a single episode just about beating out seasons 3, 4, and 6, which all have 17 episodes. This season isn't much different quality-wise than the first season. I will say it is better though. There are three episodes in this season I like over the one episode in season 1 I like, which I was probably too generous with that rating in season 1 anyway, and it probably wouldn't be the same if I rewatched it now. Still, three episodes out of 18 means for the most part this season was mostly just boring to rewatch. Even if I wasn't doing these reviews, I'd be glad I'd watched them again, because it shows me how much South Park evolved during its middle years. It also helps me remember more of the less memorable episodes now. The animation this season is slightly improved and will continue to slightly improve with every season to come, I think. The characters are also a little more developed now, and some episodes develop some side characters. The world of South Park, or the town of South Park, just feels more like a real place, and that's good. Not all of the characters are great, and despite the personalities being a bit more interesting, this season the show still struggles to use the personalities wisely with the stories. While I'm not gonna give this season an official rating from me, I did find it boring for the most part. Luckily, this is the longest season and the show will continue to improve. That's all for this video. The season review videos I do are definitely long, hopefully not irritatingly so. Leave your thoughts on this season in the comments. Until next time, blah, 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 uh, bye I guess.